please listen carefully normally what happens is a person commits a crime or there is an information or there is a credible <coughs> suspicion that the person has so good evening students my name is vishal and a faculty of law optional at plutus is so students in the previous lecture we have discussed article 21 of the constitution that provides for protection with regard to right to life and personal liberty so now moving on in today's lecture we're going to discuss article 22 of the constitution that provides certain right to individuals that are arrested that provides certain rights to individuals that are arrested so it can be regarded as protection in case of arrest or protection against arrest see <clears throat> the modern the modern jurisprudence the modern jurisprudence has an humanitarian angle the modern jurisprudence considers that the victim of the crime as well as the accused or the person who is accused or even convicted those people also have certain rights while be after being convicted the convicted person loses some of his rights but nevertheless he still have certain rights along with him in the same manner the person who is accused of a, of committing an offense he also have certain rights with regard to criminal matters now we are going to discuss what are the rights that are provided to the person who is arrested on the charge of committing an offense <clears throat> so there are certain there are series of rights that are provided under article 22 we can call it rights we can call them as safeguards first thing is no person shall be arrested no person shall be arrested without being informed of the grounds of his arrest if a person has been arrested by the law enforcement agencies the first right that <coughs> incurs to the person is he should be informed about the grounds of his arrest grounds of arrest means the facts that lead to his arrest or the facts that <coughs> uh, resulted in the enforcement authority is getting satisfied that the person should be arrested suppose a is arrested on the charge of murder a is arrested on the charge of murder. now it is a cognizable offense the police <coughs> has the right to arrest the accused so now when the police apprehended a and arrested him it is important for the police to inform him on the grounds for which he is getting arrested when i am saying the grounds of arrest the police does not have to narrate the entire fact situation that mr a we are we have reasonable information or we have credible information or we reasonably believe that you have killed mr b on the night of 24th of july at karul bag at 12 o'clock while you were wearing red shirt and after shooting him in the head you moved away on your bike so the police does not have to narrate the entire sequence of events it is suffice if the police police give him such grounds of arrest that make mr a or that let mr a know that why is he getting arrested if the police informs him mr a you are arrested on the charge of murdering mr b <coughs> that is sufficient okay so the police does not have to narrate the entire sequence of events to mr a 
now <clears throat> why this right is important why should a person be informed of his grounds of his arrest one thing is the person if he does not know the grounds of his arrest or if he does not know why is he arrested how will he prepare for his defense obviously the when the person is arrested <clears throat> he will have to prepare for his defense he will now <clears throat> look to future course of action he will either apply to for the bail or will he will apply for the writ of habeas corpus before constitution court so if the person is not arrested how will he draft a bail application so that's why it is important that the person who is arrested should be informed of the ground of his arrest one thing the court in multiple cases for example the state of madhya pradesh versus shobaram 1996 state of madhya pradesh versus shobaram 1960 1966 the court has very categorically stated that it is a duty of the police to inform, or to <coughs> inform the person who is getting arrested of the grounds of his arrest if the police does not does so it means the arrest become unlawful the arrest is not according to law the arrest is not in conformity with the procedure established by law as well as article 22 so the arrest become unlawful and it becomes vitiate so <coughs> it is a duty of the police or it is a duty of the law enforcement authorities that on the arrest of a person he should be informed why is he getting arrested so that the person can prepare his defense either in the form of <clears throat> moving a bail application or in the form of filing a writ petition of habeas corpus secondly the person has the right arrested person has the right to consult his advocate or the consult the legal practitioner of his choice person has the right to consult a legal practitioner of his choice so why this right is has been given to an arrested person see the thing is we are the students of law we are studying law or we have earned certain degrees in law so we are we are well aware of the procedure that has to be followed while arresting a person we understand that what are the rights that are available to an accused person we understand that on account of article 20 clause 3 or multiple articles or even the provisions of crpc the arrested person has certain rights he has the right not to be compelled to give self incriminating evidence he has the right not to be tortured in police custody he has the right that he should be produced before a magistrate within 24 hours of his arrest but a layman does not know that he <coughs> obviously Uh, has or he ha- he possesses all of these rights a layman who is not expert in law or the layman who is not studied law does not know that he possesses any of these rights so that's why a person who is arrested he should be given a right to consult a legal practitioner of his choice so that his legal practitioner or the advocate will tell him what rights does he have apart from that he also has the right to consult his private uh, legal practitioner in private that means <clears throat> without getting overheard by the police officers that means if a person is arrested and if he is consulting if he is in consultation with his lawyer the police should not be present in his immediate vicinity the police should be present just as to ensure that he does not abscond but the police should not be overhearing what he is talking with his lawyer thirdly the person who is arrested he has the right to inform someone who is interested in him that means he has the right to inform his parents his spouse his brother his relative any person who is interested in the welfare of the arrested person so that that another person will arrange for the defense of the accused person the person who is arrested obviously he can approach a lawyer he has no means by whom he can approach a lawyer now his friend or his parents or his spouse or his relative 
will <coughs> prepare or the he will approach a concerned lawyer so all of these rights are available as soon as the person is arrested by the law enforcement agencies now one thing more the right to consult a legal practitioner it also substantiates the right provided under article 20 clause 3 under article 20 clause 3 a right not to be compelled to provide self incriminating evidence has been provided to a accused person right not to be compelled to provide self incriminating evidence means that a person should not be compelled to give evidence against himself so this right also <coughs> proves that the criminal jurisprudence in our country has a humanitarian angle and this right proves that even the accused people or the people who are in conflict with law are also provided with certain rights so as to make the criminal jurisprudence more humanitarian in line with the <coughs> modern values of civilization human civilization a person should not be compelled because if this right was not there in the constitution or in the law book the person any person who is arrested he will be tortured he will be beaten he will be meted out with several cruelties so as to make him confess now the task of police or the law enforcement agencies would be very simple or relatively simpler they just have to beat the person they just have to torture the person they just have to inflict cruelty on the person and the person will obviously just to save himself from the cruelty he will accept that he has committed the crime so to prevent all of these situations the law provides that the person should not be compelled to give any evidence against himself or it should not be compelled to provide any testimonial compulsion if the person is voluntarily <coughs> confessing that is a separate matter but the person should not be compelled he should not be compelled either mentally or physically to give evidence against himself so this right that is provided under article 20 clause 3 it also gets substantiated when a arrested person is provided with a lawyer because the advocate will now inform his him that he has the right under article 20 clause 3 of the constitution against self incrimination a layman again again the moving by the same line of logic a layman wouldn't be aware of his right against self incriminating evidence but the lawyer will inform him that if even if the police tortures you even if the police beats you 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 just give your evidence you just confess because your confession will not be proved in a court of law it is not admissible that even the indian evidence act or now the bharti sakshi <coughs> sahita it states that the <coughs> confession that is given to the police officer or that is not given in the presence of magistrate is not admissible in the court of so now who will inform this to the accused person his advocate that's why right to consult a legal legal practitioner is important moving on third arrested person should be produced before a magistrate within 24 hours of his arrest person should be produced before a magistrate before 24 hours of his arrest that means if a person is arrested suppose on 10 am before july before 10 am 25 july he should be presented before a magistrate now this is again a safeguard that is provided to a to an accused person because now the magistrate will apply his judicial mind and he will ascertain or he will <coughs> analyze uh, considering the facts of the case considering the reports uh, submitted uh, or the documents if any submitted by the police officer whether the person has been lawfully arrested or not whether the police has followed a proper procedure while arresting the person or not or whether on the prelim <coughs> whether on the preliminary uh, <coughs> appraisal of the case whether the person looks that he has committed a crime or not. now the magistrate will apply his judicial mind and the magistrate will 
decides the future course of action whether the send whether to send the person to police custody or to judicial custody or to set him free on bail so that's why this right is important because a person who is arrested by the police if he is not presented to the magistrate the person loses his liberty now there is no opportunity of him getting himself free now when a person is presented before a magistrate magistrate will apply his judicial mind to the facts and circumstances of the cases that whether if any a charge is being uh, set out against the accused person or the arrested person or if it seems that a charge has been or there is a probability of charge being set on the person then that person should be either sent to judicial magistrate custody or to the police custody or if the person is ready to furnish bail or if the bail offence is in itself is bailable so <clears throat> even non bailable the bail can be also given in non bailable offence so the person will be set to his liberty so now it is for the magistrate to decide so if there is no provision or if there is no article 22 clause 2 then the person will be kept in the custody of police for ever there will be no person to set him free so that's why article 22 clause 2 is important because it provides an opportunity of person to restore his liberty by even applying for bail for the magistrate and the supreme court in bheem singh versus state of jnk has categorically stated that article 22 clause 2 it is just not a mere procedure or it does, it is just not a superficial procedure this procedure should be followed by the police at any cost that means a person should be produced before a magistrate and it is a duty of the magistrate to decide the future course of action in bheem singh versus state of jnk what happened was the person <coughs> or the arrested person he was not not produced physically before the magistrate the magistrate judge the magistrate just remanded him to the custody So now the when the matter went before the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court stated this is not the correct course of action. The person has the right that he should be physically presented for the magistrate so as to allow the magistrate to determine the future course of action. So <clears throat> the Supreme Court has in multiple judgments stated that Article Twenty Two, Clause Two cannot be done away with. It has to be followed in its letter and its spirit. Article twenty, clause three, and one more thing: the <coughs> rights, the several rights that are uh, <coughs> provided under Article twenty, clause two, uh, Article twenty two. Sorry, these rights are available only in the case a person is arrested on the charge of committing an offence. If a person is arre- not arrested on the charge of committing an offence, or that means if a person is arrested on any other grounds. for example in a civil case now in the civil case a defendant can be arrested and to to produce him before a magistrate or to produce him before a civil court or a judgment debtor can be arrested for the purpose of execution of a decree so in these matters the person is not arrested on any of criminal charge so this rights that are provided under article 22 they will not be available to the people who are not arrested on the charge of committing an offence or who are arrested on several other grounds or on the grounds of any other civil liability article 20 clause article 22 clause 3 states that and these rights that i have discussed one the right to be <coughs> informed of the ground of arrest the right to consult the practice legal practitioner office twice and the third is the right to be presented before a magistrate within 24 hours of his arrest these rights are not provided to certain categories of people one enemy aliens enemy aliens that means who the who are enemy aliens enemy aliens are the people or the they are the people who are citizens of any country who is at war with india so suppose <coughs> there is a there is a, there is a citizen of pakistan roaming in india and while he is roaming in india during the period he is roaming in india pakistan went 
<coughs> into a war with India. So now, because he is a citizen of the country who is at war with India, he becomes an enemy alien, and the protection that are provided under various clauses of Article 22 will not be provided to that concerned person. Secondly, the people who are arrested for preventive detention. So now preventive detention, it is also a, it is also in itself is a, a separate domain that we have to discuss. Preventive detention means arrest of a person not on the ground of him having committed an offence, but on a ground that there is a possibility that he is likely to commit a crime in future. Please listen carefully. Normally what happens is a person commits a crime or there is an information or there is a credible <coughs> suspicion that the person has committed a crime. On the basis of that, the person is arrested. So as to so as to <coughs> bring him before the law or to bring him to the justice. In the case of preventive detention, what happens is a person is arrested only on the suspicion that he is likely to commit any crime in future. So he is arrested not for having committed a crime, but to prevent him from commit a, from committing a crime. So, preventive detention. See, there is a lot of debate regarding preventive detention. Is it in conformity with the fundamental rights provided under the constitution? Is it in conformity with the modern constitutional values? Is it in conformity with the modern constitutional jurisprudence? Keeping that apart, the constitution provides for preventive detention. That's all that is required. As of now, if in future the parliament <coughs> uh, believes that the laws regarding or the provision regarding the uh, regarding the preventive detention should be erased from the constitution, that up, that is up to them. But as of now, under Article 22, Clause 4, there is a provision for preventive detention, and that is all that matters now. Now, Article 22, Clause 4 states that a person can be arrested for preventive detention but there are also certain safeguards that are provided to a person who is arrested under preventive detention and what are those safeguards first of all the person who is ar uh, arrested for preventive detention now in going by today's or uh, going by present in India there is a law called as National Security Act NSA this is the law that provides for preventive detention right so the parliament has enacted a law that provides for par <coughs> that provides for preventive detention the state governments as well as the central government or we can say the legislative assemblies or the parliament both have a concurrent power to enact a law regarding preventive detention. The various entry in our <coughs> union list one, union list and the concurrent list provides the <coughs> central uh, the parliament and the state legislative assembly the power to enact a law on preventive detention. So the parliament has enacted a law national security act. So now if a detention order is made under national security act a detention order is made on the grounds that a person is likely to cause a breach of peace or the person is likely to be detrimental to the interest of society at last so in the, on, the, on those grounds a detention order can be made by the appropriate government so now when a detention order has been made and the person is preventively detained in that case also <coughs> The person shall be communicated the grounds. Person is arrested, but even then he should be communicated the grounds on the basis of which he is arrested. Again, the <coughs> protection that is provided in case of arrest is also provided in the case of preventive detention. That the person should be informed of the ground of arrest, except those grounds that the government consider. <coughs> Uh, to be in public interest not to be informed so in those cases except from those cases the 
person will be or person shall be arrested on the ground uh, person shall be informed of the grounds on the basis of which he has been detained secondly he has the right to make a representation so when the person has been provided with the grounds why he is arrested to usse bataya jayega ki aapko arrest kyu kiya gaya ki that your likely activities are such that you are likely to cause a breach of peace in the future that's why you are been uh, you have been detained so now on the basis of which the person has the right to make a representation to the government the person can present his case to the government that why he should not be or why he should be released third a person who is arrested under a preventive detention law he can be kept under custody or he can be <coughs> detained for a maximum period of 3 months if the government thinks that he should be detained for a period of more than 3 months then before this the expiry of 3 months from the date he was arrested the government shall constitute to an advisory board and the advisory board it should be advisory board should be should consist of the judges of the high court the <clears throat> former judges of the high court or the sitting judges of the high court that means again a safeguard has been provided that advisory board would be constituted and now the advisory board will decide or it will approve whether the person who is arrested he should shall be uh, shall be kept in custody for more than 3 months or for a period above 3 months and the person who is arrested he also has the right to make a present a representation to the advisory board now that the advisory board thinks that the detention order has been passed without giving due consideration or it has been passed on either malafide grounds or it has been <coughs> passed without following the due procedure or if it, the advisory board feels that there is no such ground on the basis of which the person shall be detained the advisory board will quash the detention order and the person will be set free and if the advisory board feels that the person shall be arrested or shall be kept in detention above a period of 3 months it can pass a consistent order or it can pass a corresponding order now the last thing is article 22 clause 7 it provides that the parliament can pass a law or the parliament can enact a law the parliament can enact a law that can provide for the class of cases and circumstances in which a person can be kept in preventive detention for a period beyond 3 months without taking the approval of advisory board now article 22 clause 7 it is an exception to article 22 clause 4 it is saying that the parliament can make a law and the law itself can prescribe the class of cases and circumstances in which a person can be detained for a period of more than 3 months without taking approval from the advice so the safeguard of <coughs> consulting or taking approval from the advisory board is done away but it can be only for the law <coughs> that provides for such a condition obviously it is an exception to article 22 clause 4 that means it is going contrary to article 22 clause 4 because article 22 clause 4 is saying that a person who is preventively detained he shall <coughs> be detained or if the government want to detain him for a period beyond 3 months the government shall adv- uh, co- <coughs> take a rule from an advisory board who which consists of judicial authorities or the judges of the high court now article 22 clause 7 is proving pro- uh, <coughs> article 22 going contrary to article 22 clause 
Now the court stated, as the constitution itself contains Article 22 Clause 7, so the Parliament does have the power to pass such a law. But it shall, because it is an exception, and it is providing, and <coughs> it is providing a very stringent condition. It is provide, it is providing that a person can be kept in custody beyond three months without taking approval of advisory board. So it is a stringent condition on the liberty of a person. So as it is <coughs> providing a it is it, it is basically covering some exceptional circumstances so it is providing something and imposing very stringent conditions on the liberty of person so first of all this law should be such that it should be clearly state in what class of cases or what circumstances the person will be <coughs> detained for period of more than three months the court stated clearly that the law should clearly contain under what circumstances or what class of cases can a person be detained for more than period of three months. The court stated the law shall <coughs> not contain some vague words. Now there was a condition there was <coughs> a preventive detention law of in India and that was challenged that the grounds or the circumstances that are mentioned is, are very weak. Jesse security of state. or maintenance of services now the question is these are very vague terms what do you mean by maintenance of services what kind of services are it uh, does it contain only essential services and all the services so now the question is the court stated yes the parliament has the power to make law by the virtue of article 22 clause 7 but it has to the law clearly has to state under what circumstances a person will be detained the court stated that the government or the parliament cannot escape the liability just by mentioning some vague conditions like security of state. Now, what do we mean by security of state? Now, if a person, if 20 people <coughs> blocks the road, do will you consider it as a prop, uh, is it as a detriment to the security of state? What will you consider as security of, uh, as a threat to security of state? So, the court stated the law should clearly prescribe as the law is in exception to Article 22 Clause 4. So it should clearly prescribe under what circumstances or what class of cases will a person be detained for a period of more than two months. So the court basically held that the law that is made under Article 22 Clause 7, it should be interpreted in a very strict manner. So the court basically took this line of interpretation because the court felt that if the government is given arbitrary power to detain people on some vague grounds it will lead to a great miscarriage of justice just so to protect the liberty of the people the court held that such law should be clear it should be <coughs> capable of clear and precise definition it should not contain any vague expressions such as maintenance of services and the liberty of the people cannot be constrained on the basis of such vague expression in the law. So the court stated the parliament can pass a law provided the law should be precise. It should not be vague. So now <coughs> we have covered the article, entire article 22 uh, entire article 22. It states or it basically provides for different rights that are given to the people who are arrested. It also gives certain rights to people who are preventively detained. So that's <coughs> so students. Here we end the class. So I hope you found this video informative and knowledgeable. So for more of such videos, please stay tuned with Lutus IS. Thank you.